I am 46 years old, and my wife is 44. That's for this. I will refer to myself as Larry and to my wife as Katie. We have two grown children, a son who is 23 and a daughter who is 21. Katie is currently pregnant and is expected to give birth in about three months. This was not planned, but I was overjoyed at the thought of becoming a father again. Before I address the issue at hand, I will provide some background on my situation. I have been working for the same company for 19 years and have been able to earn a good living. My wife was a stay-at-home mom until our daughter turned 16, at which point she got a job. Katie worked in an administrative position for a company close to our home for a little over four years. However, a few months ago, she abruptly switched jobs and now holds a similar position across town. While she did receive a modest increase in pay, it was not enough to justify leaving her previous job. Out you, at the time, she said she needed a change and had grown tired of working for her previous employer. A few months after starting her new job, I was contacted by the wife of her former boss, whom I will refer to as Brenda. Brenda informed me that she had proof that her husband and my wife had a physical affair six months ago, right before Katie left the company. At first, I did not believe it. However, Brenda emailed me copies of their communications, and seeing those messages broke me. Thing from their conversations, it appeared that the affair lasted about a month, and they were together on at least three occasions at my house. In one of their final communications, her boss asked her to leave me. He insisted that if she did, he would leave Brenda. My wife replied that she could not because she loved me. This is where it seemed that she ended their fling, which coincided with when she started looking for another job. After giving notice to her boss, there were numerous messages from him begging her to stay and offering her things like a significant pay raise, additional bonuses, and the ability to work from home three days a week. He also promised to keep their relationship professional going forward, but my wife refused his offers and left the company. From what I could tell, she had no contact with him since then. According to Brenda, after she found out about the affair, she kicked her husband out and filed for divorce. Not only that, she reported the situation to his HR department and he was fired from his management position. As she told me that her goal is to make him suffer and regret what he did for the rest of his life. I thanked Brenda for informing me of this situation and we made plans to address it. And to keep in touch, that night I confronted Katie. At first, she tried denying it, but then I showed her the mountain of messages. Seeing the evidence, she broke down crying, admitted to everything, and begged for forgiveness. She said all the things you'd expect a remorseful person to say after getting caught cheating. I told her right there that I would be filing for divorce. She begged me not to, stating she ended the affair and quit her job because she loved me and wanted us to be together forever. She also said we needed to provide a wonderful home for her son when he arrives. I told her that if he is mine, I will be a great father to him whether I am married to her or not. Katie looked at me puzzled and asked what I meant. I told her she knew what I meant and then explained that the day he is born, he will be DNA tested. I then said, if it turns out he's not mine, I will blame no role in his life. Hearing this sent her into a full meltdown. She kept insisting that the child was mine, but I told her we'll see. As with this, she ran upstairs crying and I used the opportunity to call her parents and explain what was going on. They came right over to comfort and support me. Katie admitted everything to them and cried throughout their visit. That was a tough day. Later that same evening, I also ended up telling both my kids about the situation after they got home and saw us all sitting in the living room with their crying mother. They were in disbelief and really upset by their mother's actions. That night, I moved Katie into the spare bedroom. I also stopped sharing meals with her and spoke very little to her since. My dad suggested I at least talk to a lawyer about the situation to protect myself and my assets, which I did the following week. I met with an attorney and I'm glad I did. She recommended I have the DNA test done immediately. She also explained that upon getting the results, if the test showed I was not the father, she recommends filing a challenge of paternity case. I talked to Katie about it and she agreed to do it. So we had an appointment set up for the following week, but Katie kept asking me not to do the test until after the baby was born. She even offered to sign an agreement stating she will not hold me responsible if I was not the father. Though she swore I was, I told my attorney of Katie's offer, and my attorney insisted I proceed with the test and told me to stop talking so much to Katie. I took her advice and explained it to Katie, and she tearfully accepted my decision. 
Kitty started behaving nervously and was a wreck, and even took paid time off from work until after the test date, as she couldn't concentrate. Her behavior led me to believe the worst, but we'll see. So I talked to my kids and encouraged them to support their mother. I also told them that no matter what happened with the paternity test, they would soon have a baby brother. I have a baby brother, and he was going to need their love and support. They understood and agreed. I have to be honest. At that point, I was torn about the paternity outcome I wanted. On one hand, I'd love to have another son, but on the other hand, I was 99 sure I was going to divorce Katie regardless of the paternity results, and I reasoned that if the test showed he was not mine, it would make my decision to divorce her much easier. We'll fast forward a few days later. The result of the test showed he was not mine. Remember before when I said I was torn about the paternity outcome? I wasn't. I really wanted that baby to be mine. When I got the news, it felt like the wind had been knocked out of my lungs, and I had a full-blown panic attack for the first time in my life. Katie was a complete mental case and took leave from her company. She continued pleading with me and pledged to do everything to get me to stay in the marriage, but I was done. This truly broke me, and I wanted it all to be over with. I asked her to move in with her parents, as I couldn't handle being in the same house with her. The constant crying and begging was overwhelming. She reluctantly agreed, but only if I promised to keep talking to her. I agreed, but limited our contact to two calls per week. I stuck to this, though she tried calling me every day, but I typically didn't respond. That's important. In one of her texts, she told me she was not going to inform her former boss that he was the father and will not be pursuing him for support. I told her that was not my concern. She went on to say she wanted me to be the father and that no one but our immediate family would ever know I was not. She said I could think of him as my adopted child. I blew up and again told her I had nothing against the child, but I would never play any significant role in his life. I had no more connection to him than a man off the streets. She cried and pleaded for me to change my mind, and even tried to guilt me into it, but my resolve was strong. It was during this period that my regional president talked to me about moving down to North Carolina to run the office there, and I was strongly considering it. My kids wanted me to take it and said if I moved they were coming with me. My son is a skilled tradesman and can get a job just about anywhere, while my daughter was still in college at the time and was about to graduate. So I decided that if I did end up taking the job, it wouldn't be for the money. Instead, it would be to get away from my area and move to a place with milder winters. We'll fast forward to 10 months later. Katie and I got divorced and she had her baby. It was an amicable split and we divided our assets 50-50 with no issues alimony or child support were not included in the agreement as suggested by my lawyer part of the agreement was also that katie would not give our child my last name she was initially sad and objected but eventually agreed to give the child her maiden name i was not aware that parents could choose any last name for their child my attorney explained that in our state parents have the freedom to give their child any last name they want she mentioned that she has seen women do this multiple times causing confusion for everyone involved Currently, Katie and her son are still living with her parents. I will discuss this further later on. Next, I accepted a job in North Carolina and absolutely loved my new position and the area. Everything is clean and new here, and I live between the mountains and the ocean. I recently purchased a brand new house, and my son moved in with me three months ago. He is already working steadily and earning nearly 20, more than he did up north. My daughter will be finishing her degree in December and plans to move down here at the beginning of the year. My parents have visited twice and have fallen in love with the area. They are considering buying a patio home and eventually retiring here. I am encouraging them to do it now, but they are hesitant to leave their current home. However, I am close to convincing them. And now regarding Katie and her son. My children informed me that she has been discussing quitting her job and moving down here as well. This has upset her parents, as she is their only child. She is trying to convince them to move with her, but they are not interested. My children have managed to persuade her to slow down on this decision, explaining to their mother that she would be losing her parents as trusted babysitters. I hope she does not move here, as it would complicate and stress my life once again. She has not mentioned anything to me about this, and I hope she does not. If she does decide to move here, there is nothing I can do about it. For now, I'm just letting things play out. Right after our divorce was finalized, Katie continued to call and text me as if we were still married. Last week, I told her to only contact me if there is an important issue involving our children. 
She agreed, but continued to contact me over trivial matters. Inevitably, our conversations always turned to her asking how I am doing and telling me how much she misses me, how sorry she is for what she has done and how much I would love the baby if I just held him once. I quickly shut this down and reiterated to her that I have no negative feelings towards her and I hope he is healthy, happy, and grows up to be a successful young man. I once again made it clear that I will not play a significant role in his life. I also mentioned that if I ever see him at events with our children, I will of course be kind and welcoming. Be kind and treat him well, but nothing more. I also told her to stop calling and texting me. I told Katie to email me when there are important things to discuss about our kids, and I will then decide if we need to discuss the matter. For some reason, she was unhappy about this, and cried, saying talking to me was the one thing that has been keeping her going, and if I take that away, she just might lose it. I held firm and she eventually complied with my wishes. So that's where things are now. Even though Katie obliterated the great life I once had, I feel like I've been reborn. In fact, I feel as alive and forward looking now as I did when I was 20. I actually feel better now, because I have complete confidence in myself today that I didn't have back then. For those of you who are curious, I have not started dating again, but plan to start after the first month of the year, taking it slow. I will never walk down the aisle again, but I would like to find a woman to share my life with. Sorry Katie, that person will not be you. In closing, I want to thank everyone for listening to my story. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Until next time, I will see you again. Take care.